this beautiful question involves doing a problem with Routes Law. Uh, it asks us to calculate the vapor pressure of a solution made by dissolving 109 grams of glucose. So I've got 109 grams of glucose. <clears throat> in uh, 920 milliliters of water. And I, if you're okay with this, I'm going to change that directly to 0.92 liters of water. Hopefully we're all alright with that. It tells us the temperature at 25 degrees Celsius. It also tells us that the vapor pressure of pure water is uh, 23.76 millimeters of mercury. And then we assume that the density is equal to 1 gram per mil. So Routes Law is a magical equation that tells us that the vapor pressure of a solution right here, uh, so I'm going to write down vapor pressure of solution, uh, of solution is equal to the uh, mole fraction of the solvent. <clears throat> this is mole fraction of the solvent multiplied by the uh, vapor pressure of pure solvent. So I'll write down P solvent. So uh, this would be, once again, the vapor pressure of what the solvent would be if there was nothing dissolved in it. Uh, and we should remember, of course, that when we dissolve something in a solvent, it changes the melting point, the boiling point, and the vapor pressure of that solvent. So this equation is used to help us determine what the new vapor pressure of that solvent would be after adding a solute. Hopefully that makes sense. So um, the question, once again, is asking us... <coughs> to uh, calculate the vapor pressure of the solution. So this is the thing that we're uh, trying to determine in this particular equation, or sorry, this particular problem. Uh, so we have to begin by determining what the mole fraction of the solvent is. Now remember, mole fraction is a, um, or sorry, the new solution is. As I did in the previous problem, mole fraction is going to be equal to the number of moles of uh, the component in question divided by the number of moles, uh, or total moles of the solvent and solute together. So I'll write total moles. In a previous problem, I uh, calculated the mole fraction of a solute. In other words, I had on top the number of moles of the solute divided by the total moles of solute plus solvent together. But did you know that you can actually calculate a mole fraction of anything in a solution? You can calculate the mole fraction of the solvent as well just by putting the number of moles of the solvent in the numerator divided by the total number of moles of solvent and solute together. For Routes Law, that's actually what we have to do in this case. So, we need to determine x uh, by remembering that what we've got is 0.92 liters of water and we've got 109 grams of glucose. We first of all then need to determine the total, total number of moles that each of these values corresponds to. So, I've got 109 grams of glucose. It gives me the molecular weight of glucose, so one mole of glucose, as being uh, 180.2. So 180.2. You throw that in your calculator, and it tells us that the total number of moles of glucose is 0.604 moles. So I'll go ahead and write down moles of glucose. We now have 0.92 liters of water. How many moles is that? How in the world do you determine that? Well, you're going to have to use density. So I'm going to write this up here. 0.92 mole, or sorry, liters. In fact, now that I think about it, it might be better to keep this as 920 milliliters in this case. So 920 milliliters of water, it gives us the density of water as being one gram in one milliliter. And that's true for pure water. Then we throw in grams and moles. One mole of water weighs how much? Well, hydrogens are 1, oxygen 16, that's 18 grams. So grams cancel each other out, mills cancel each other out, and I'm left with moles of water. And uh, I think that comes out to be, um, yeah, 51.11 moles of water. That's how many moles there are in 920 milliliters. So I have moles of glucose, I've got moles of water. So what I'm trying to do to determine x is the total number of, or sorry, I'm trying to determine the mole fraction of water, of the solvent, not the solute in this case. So that's going to be 51.11 divided by 51.11 plus 0.604. So uh, you throw that into your calculator, you end up getting uh, 0.9. 988 as being the uh, mole fraction of water. Does that make sense? The rest of it ain't too bad. Sorry, I said the word ain't. The rest of it is not too bad because it tells us what the vapor pressure is for pure water in this problem. 
Yeah, at this temperature. So this uh, this P solvent is this uh, 23.76 millimeters of mercury. So we have that, and we have now the mole fraction. All we have to do then is throw in 0.988 for this term, 23.76 millimeters of mercury for this term, and then just multiply them together, and that gives us our final vapor pressure of the new solution, and hence the correct answer.